This is why the whole world is saying Jesus is coming back soon. Already in 2023, a huge chunk of the sun has been broken off. The Christ Redeemer statue was struck by lightning. 35,000 precious souls were lost overnight. A revival has been reported at Ashbury University. Bizarre things have been spotted in the sky. A huge train has derailed in Ohio and Damar Hamlin shocked the whole world on live TV. But did you know that is not the reason why I believe every single one of us can say with certainty that Jesus Christ is going to return in days time. Now before you get angry, before you misunderstand what I've got to say, please stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you something that I believe you've never seen before in the Bible and I know it's going to blow your minds. But first we need to do some legwork. Here are the seven signs of the second coming of Christ. The first sign that the return of Christ is very near is there will be many false Christs. The Bible says, for false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. You know as well as I do, there's always been counterfeit Jesuses. There's always been people who have claimed that they are God. But mark my words, there will be many more who will arise. But not only will false Christs arise, but there will be other people who, okay, they won't claim to be Jesus Christ, but they will seek to take Jesus' throne. Everybody wants to be a savior. Everybody wants to find solutions to the world's problems. Everyone wants to solve things politically. And just like when Jesus Jesus Christ came, he performed miracles. There'll be people who try to emulate the miracles of Christ. Just like Christ healed people, there'll be people who are claiming that they can also heal the sick. Just like Christ knew how to control the environment, there'll be people who are saying, yes, we too can control the environment. And just like Jesus Christ changed the world, there'll be other false saviors who will try to change the world. Yes, they will sacrifice themselves, not for the good of mankind, but for the good of themselves. They will die for Mother Earth. The second sign that the return of Christ is near is there will be wars and rumours of wars. But come on, Joe, hasn't that been happening for 2,000 years? Well, if you truly believe that, you really do need to stick around to hear about this Bible verse that proves that the return of Christ is only days away. But actually, yes, although there has always been wars and rumours of wars, you need to remember this will happen more and more. Just like birth pains, how when a woman is about to give birth, the birth pains, at first they're spread apart, but then they get close closer and closer and more and more intense until the birth comes. And just like the return of Christ, as it gets nearer and nearer, we will hear of more wars. There'll be more allies, more unrest, more fighting, but it will happen on an international scale. And it doesn't matter how many peacemakers, it doesn't matter how many political men in suits try to keep the peace, no peace will ever be found on earth because these things must come to pass before the Lord Jesus Christ returns. And the third sign that the second coming is near is there will be an increase in natural disasters. Right now, as we speak, there are over 30 million people who are experiencing alarming levels of hunger. Right now, as we speak, our hearts go out to the Middle East as there are so many people who've been shaken by what has just happened to them and they're trying to pick up the pieces and get on with the rest of their lives. Right now, as we speak, do I need to remind you of all of the craziness of everything that happened in 2020? The truth is, this world is trembling right now, and it doesn't take a genius to notice it. Have I got permission to say this? As I look out at the world, and I see all that's going on around, I've got to say, can our earth handle much more disaster? Is it any wonder that in the Bible it says, when the men and women see the judgment of God fall on the earth, the Bible says that men's hearts will melt. Men's hearts will fail them because they realize that the world they have lived in for so long is crumbling before their very eyes. 
And listen to me guys, I love animals, I love marine life, I love God's creation and I want to do my bit for the environment. But it doesn't matter how much Greta, it doesn't matter how much Leonardo DiCaprio or Jane Fonda protest, we will not be able to save this earth because the writing is already written on the wall. Thousands of years ago in the Bible, we were told that this earth would melt away. And as we look at the news, as we look around us, we've got to say we can see that prediction coming true. The fourth sign that the return of Christ is imminent is that the love of many will grow cold. The Bible says, now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith. Ten years ago, had any of us heard of the phrase deconstructing one's faith? And yet today, there are many famous people who are coming forward publicly saying that they have gone through a sort of deconstruction of Christianity. Hatred for God is on the rise, scoffing is off the scale, and even the people of the world are divided. It seems that nobody can get along these days unless they bring unity over some kind of sin. And again, can I say this, as I look out at the world and I see the wicked imaginations, the new ideas, the new concepts, the new creations of man, I have to say, how much longer can this holy, righteous God look down on our our earth and be so long suffering? How much longer can he be patient when he sees so much evil abounding and so much pride in men and women's hearts? The scripture also says that in the last days God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So let me ask you, what do you think that strong delusion is? The Bible also says that in the last days there will be a great falling away. Now perhaps it's just us guys over here in England that have noticed an unsustainable decline in the churches. Many people today are falling away. There's so much unrest. There's so much disunity in the Christians of our nation. And my experience is that many people don't really care about the word of God anymore in England. Is all they care about is having a social club, a community, or a place with outstanding childcare. But again, that is not the reason why I believe we can all say that the return of Christ is just days away. But I'm going to show you that in a moment's time. The fifth sign just before the second coming of Christ is that the gospel will be preached in all of the world. Listen to me. I believe we have severely underestimated just how many people have been unreached with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Very recently, the missionary organization Radical came out with a fascinating statistic that said there are over 3 billion people and over 7,000 people groups who have never heard the gospel. And just five years ago, I was in Greece with my wife. There we are, we're eating a meal late at night and the waiter comes up to us and starts talking to us and he asks me what do I do for a living so I told him I'm a Christian preacher and I spread a message about Jesus you've heard of Jesus right and I promise you this the man's face was blank you've never heard of Jesus Christ and he said no I haven't well let's just say 10 minutes later that man certainly had heard about the Lord Jesus Christ but perhaps you're sitting there now and you're saying, yes, I have heard of Jesus, but I don't know much about him. What is this gospel? Well, I'm very glad you've asked. You see, you and I stand before a holy God, the creator of all of the universe, one who is righteous, one who is perfect in all of his ways. This God who made us sees us for what we truly are. We're guilty sinners that are condemned before him. Okay, yes, we might look nice on the outside. Yes, people might say that we are good, upstanding citizens, but God sees us for what we really are. We're sinners. There's a rottenness, a dirtiness, an uncleanness that lives right inside of us. And even if we try to never sin, it's impossible because within our nature, we lean towards evilness. We lean towards doing wrong things that God hates. But God loves us deeply and he has not left us in our sin. He's not left us without a way, without a path to follow because the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world and he walked that path. He walked the path of righteousness 
sins. He lived the perfect life and then he sacrificed himself on a cross. And there on the cross, our sin was dealt with. Every single person who is listening to me right now, all of our sin was transferred onto Jesus Christ. And there on the cross, when Christ had nails through his hands and his feet, a crown of thorns into his skull, when the land went dark because God poured out all of his wrath on Jesus, there our sin was dealt with when he was punished in our place. And then the Lord Jesus Christ, who also loved us, died. And he was buried, put in a tomb. But then, on the third day, the Lord Jesus Christ did the impossible. He rose from the dead, proving that he's not just any man. He himself is God in a skin. And he himself is worthy of worship. And he alone is the one who can forgive us of our sins. Because when he shed his blood on that cross, that blood can wash us whiter than snow. And we can trust in that because we see that this man is someone special who can beat the grave. And when Jesus Christ says, I can give you life, to the full abundant life, we know that we can put our trust in him and have eternal life in him alone. So, I need to ask you now, as you hear that message, the gospel, what will you do with it? What will you do with this man, Jesus, who commands that you turn to him, turn from your sins and put your faith in him alone, the savior of the world? But hello, because Jesus is alive, part of this gospel means that he must come back again. The Bible foresaw this thousands of years ago. It says in the book of Zechariah, and in that day, his feet, Jesus' feet, will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two. You see, when Jesus returns, he's quite literally going to split the world in two. All the men and women of the world will tremble when they see him. This will not be a secret event. No, every eye will see him stand on the Mount of Olives. And you know, the first time when Christ came on this earth, he allowed men and women to judge and condemn him. But the second time, the roles will be reversed. Christ is coming now to judge men and women, to condemn those who rejected him, and to be the ruler and the judge over all of the earth. And I'll tell you one thing, there is one thing I am more sure of than the sun will rise tomorrow and it's this, Jesus is coming again. Why do I say that? Because I know that the Lord Jesus Christ is a man of his word and if he says he's coming back, all the evidence points towards this one fact, he really will come again and you better be ready for that day. The sixth sign that the return of Christ is near is the abomination of desolation. Now this is insane and I don't want to rush it. So in a future video, I'm going to go into this in full detail. And if you'd like to be notified of that video, make sure you do subscribe. But essentially what you need to know is there will be a man, a prince of this world, who will deceive many, many people. He'll even deceive the people of Israel. And he will set himself up in God's temple and he will demand that people worship him instead of worshipping the true Lord God. Okay, I am going to come back to the final sign, the seventh sign just before the Lord Jesus Christ returns. But first, allow me to introduce you to the plot twist of the century. This is the reason why I believe we can say with confidence that the Lord Jesus Christ will return in a few days. Now I know, as I speak right now in the comment box, people have already quoted that famous saying from the Lord Jesus Christ. They've quoted this verse. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. And they're right. Only God the Father knows the precise hour, the precise day when the Son of God will return. So Job, what are you talking about? Do you remember in the Garden of Eden when God gave a warning to Adam saying, if you eat of that forbidden fruit, this will happen. Listen to what the warning was. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now isn't that interesting? Because when we look at the life of Adam, he did not die in the same day that he ate of that fruit. In fact, he lived to 930 years old. So what's that all about? Okay, we'll watch this. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8, it says, But beloved, do not forget this one thing. So this is something we can easily forget. That with the Lord, one day, 
is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So actually, even though Adam did live to 930 years old, he actually died within a day. Because in God's eyes, a thousand years is just one day. Now do you see where I'm coming from? You see, for thousands of years, people have been mocking Christians. They've laughed at us because we've always said, the Lord is coming soon. Jesus Christ himself said, behold, I'm coming quickly. And people say, well, he said that in his word, but he's still not here. That must mean that the Bible isn't true. That must mean that your Christianity is false. But actually, Jesus is coming quickly. Because in God's eyes, those 2,000 years have just been two days because a day is like a thousand years before the Lord. And okay, you are right. None of us know. None of us know when the Lord Jesus Christ will return. Not even the angels in heaven. But there's one thing we do need to know and it's this. Are we ready for that day? When the Lord comes like a thief in the night, are we ready? Because the Bible says prepare to meet thy God. Prepare for that day and right now God is giving you a second chance before his second can coming. Right now there is an opportunity for you to be saved and one day that door which is open today will be shut forevermore and then you will really understand just how long eternity is. Then you will understand that yes, a thousand years is but one day. This infinite God who looks down on all the earth, who looks down and sees world history and sees it's just a drop in the ocean and I really do pray that you will be on the right side of eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ because you too have repented and believed on his name alone for salvation. But hello, what is the seventh sign? What is the final sign before the second coming of Christ? Well, I don't wanna rush this right now. So if you want to know all about it, check this deep dive, this video, and you'll know what people will see just before Jesus comes again.